I'm here to tell you what I know and what I would do. And as you're watching this video, hopefully you gradually see the work that is going into just making a video with a parrot on your head. Hello, my fellow sniffers, flighters, and hatchlings. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is my African Grey Cody. For those of you who want to know more about what it's like to have an African Grey, please stay with me throughout this whole video because I'm gonna cover everything from what it's really like to have an African Grey. If it's easy, do they bite? Do they talk? Do they damage things? Can they be potty trained? Are they smart? All of those issues I'm gonna cover here today along with some of your questions on Instagram. Now, before we get into this video, I want to go over a few things. You are being naughty. I introduced you. I don't have any idea why you're being so naughty, but I wanna go over some exciting things for you guys. For those of you who are new here, my channel is about education you guys on parrots, but also showing you how to have fun with birds and live with them in an engaged, not caged manner, which is my hashtag. It's really important. Birds are extremely forgotten about in the world and people rush out to get birds. So I'm here to dispel some myths and some rumors. So grab a cup of tea and stick with me. Real quick, some orders of business. I want to give some shout outs to some of my flighters. My flighters are those of you who support me making videos on Patreon. I want to know that I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So shout out to Casey Minter, Janet Andreessen, and Precious Piper. Thank you for joining us. I'm really excited to have you guys. Next order of business, I wanna congratulate our winners of the golden ticket from our feathered fun box last month. Tammy DeRitter, Ariel's Adventures, and Renee Mills. You guys have all won $100 worth of toys from our website, parrotstation.com. I hope you guys are really enjoying that and I'm loving the videos. Some new things we're gonna do. I'm gonna feature one of your Instagram videos at the end of every episode of mine so if you want to be featured hashtag pick me Marlene and I'll show your bird at the end of the video I love when you guys tag me in your bird eating our food watching our show in your merch it's really exciting for me so don't forget that and some shout outs to our hashtag early bird gang today those of you that comment on my videos early Diana Beats Madison Ramirez and Estelle Roblox okay let's get into the video all right guys clearly it is no secret that there is a popular YouTuber that just got an African Grey. I know he's a bird lover, so I'm very excited for him, but I am also aware that there's probably a lot of you that will want to go out and get an African Grey just because now you think it's cool, you think it's easy, or it's just kind of giving you this awareness. So I hope this video will help enlighten you a little bit more on what it's really like to have an African Grey because it's not as easy as you think, but it may not also be as hard as you think. That depends on you. So let's Let's just get right into the questions and then we'll talk about it. Stay to the end, guys. I really want you guys to be educated on the subject. This is very important to bring awareness to people because there's so many birds locked in cages all over the world just because people thought they could handle them. They wanted something pretty. They wanted an exotic pet and they just did not have the skills. So yes, it all is going to boil down to you. So let's talk about it. Okay, in no particular order, I'm gonna go over some of the questions that were sent to me from you guys and they're really good questions. So here we go. First question, will my African gray talk? I wanted to address this first because I know that a lot of you are really excited about this factor when it comes to African grays or birds in general. And a lot of people run out and get birds for this reason. Just right off the bat, let me tell you, there is a good chance that your African gray will not talk. I have had three African grays. No, four. I've actually had four African grays. My first African gray, George, was an amazing speaker. George. Yeah, that's George. George could apply words to sentences. George could tell you colors, animals, what's going to happen, just full on conversation. It was unbelievable. And that intellectual stimulation was exactly what made African Greys my favorite bird. 
But since then, I've had a few more African greys, most notably Cody, who's here on my shoulder, and also Merlin, who is currently downstairs. If you guys are interested in how I got Merlin and wanna watch the journey of Merlin, don't forget to check out that series on my channel. I'll put the link below. They are not the greatest talkers. If you had an African grey like George or some of the greys that I see, you know, these guys just don't really compare and you have to love them anyway. You cannot get a bird to talk. You hear that noise right there that she's making? Well, um, a lot of them, even if they don't talk, they will make uh, really interesting noises, microwaves beeping, camera shutters, um, water running is some of the amazing fun things. A lot of people in my house love hearing them do water running and all those kind of things, you know, just like it's amazing. It's like they're a computer. So yeah, that is very entertaining, but it's not enough to take on the workload of what it is to have a bird because that's gonna be up to you, okay? So um, this kind of leads me into the next question. Yeah, you see already, this is like, you know, this one is rambunctious and I loved African Grace because my George was not rambunctious. So I'm just gonna sit here like this so you guys can see her while she just messes up my hair. Fact. Okay, the elephant in the room, the YouTuber that we're speaking about is obviously Logan Paul. Logan Paul just got a baby African Grey and you know, he's a bird guy. So I know he loves birds and um, he has experience with birds. So congratulations to him. I wish him all the best. But there are some things in the video that I feel we need to address, not, not in a way against him or anything like that, just because he's not a bird YouTuber. So really maybe he doesn't really owe it to anyone to speak on these things or he's not he's not that kind of youtuber so he's not really aware of what he's showing so i just want to um you know say the things for him that he probably didn't get to say which i hope he knows and i'm sure that he does but so the first thing is you saw that he got a very young African gray. Now, again, guys, I'm really big on not judging on YouTube because you never know the behind the scenes. And also some people are great at entertainment. So uh, they just know what is gonna be entertaining. Just like how I know that Vinny dive bombing is something that you guys absolutely love, but that's not really what it's like to live in the house with Vinny. He's actually the sweetest bird, which I tell you guys all the time. So, you know, there's like this balance between entertainment and, um, reality. A lot of people, I'm afraid, might go out and want to get a baby African Grey. Sometimes you'll see that if you get a baby and it's really young, then you're going to have to hand feed the baby its formula. And personally, I do not advise that. Um, not speaking to those of you who are experienced with that. I'm not speaking to those of you who know how to do that. I'm speaking to those of you who have never had a bird and even those of you who are very experienced with birds but not with hand feeding like myself. And I've had some training from Lou actually and I just still wouldn't take the chance. There's a lot of things that you can do to damage a bird if you hand feed a baby bird. You can burn their crop. You can cause them an infection. Do you think that's funny, Cody? You see, they like laugh, even if they're not great talkers and, and Cody does talk. You can cause aspiration pneumonia. Yeah, you just, just destroy my hair. Why don't you? Um, and also if you don't do it right, there, you know, you could just have a malnourished bird. So I feel my personal opinion that you'd have to be really experienced. Again, with the video um, that you guys saw, you don't know, someone experienced maybe feeding the bird. Don't ever take any of that and then just attack people. I'm here to tell you what I know and what I would do. And as you're watching this video, hopefully you gradually see the work that is going into just making a video with a parrot on your head. So um, maybe not all easy, right? So that's just my uh, personal opinion on that. Again, if you guys are experienced with any of this, don't just ignore it and move on. I'm just talking about myself and what I would advise. On a different note, should you get a rescue or a baby? Listen guys, I always promote rescues. Most of my birds are rescues. There are so many birds that needs home, but I also feel it's important to stress responsible rescue. I get a lot of emails from people who ran out and rescued a cockatoo and they're just, that was just not a good idea for them. Maybe a different bird would have worked, but like they didn't know about cockatoos and their issues. So 
I think we're going to have to talk a lot more about responsible rescue because a lot of people are like, rescue, rescue, rescue. Listen, I love bird lovers, so um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not here to judge. I have a baby bird and I have a bunch of rescues. And for me, it's the same. I love them all the same, even more so my rescues because I feel like I'm giving them something like a home and that's really important to me. So I do encourage you guys to rescue birds, but to rescue responsibly. You know, some of my past experiences with my first bird, who was clearly not a rescue, as a cockatiel, that made me who I am today and it made me go out and rescue a lot of birds throughout my lifetime. So try not to judge people because you never know what they're going to become. And um, that's important too, because the bird world has a lot of that kind of drama that's just like, you know, I'm here to help, not to judge. And on that note, can you bond more with a baby? Listen, I think there is a different kind of bonding, but not one is better than the other. You guys know I'm obsessed with Brando, but it's not because Brando is my baby bird. It's because I think I'm obsessed with mustache parakeets in general. They're just so amazing. Okay, next. Are African greys an easy bird to have? Okay. This all depends on you guys. You know, one time I got this nasty email from someone going, you make it look so easy. And I'm like, listen, I'm not gonna lie. Everybody knows that, you know, I show the crazy things. I show the hard and I show some other things that I may make look easy and it may be hard for you. You wanna step up? I was honestly a little hesitant because he kind of bit George and he, we have learned that he will bite the hand that He's on. And that may just be because I've had birds my entire life. So I can live and accept a certain amount of crazy that maybe you can. Maybe you have a full-time job. Maybe you have school. But yes, so I just show my truth. So here's the thing. If you've never had a bird, my first African gray did not chew walls. Yet Merlin chews all of the baseboards. And that is a lot. That might be something that an inexperienced bird owner might say, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna lock this bird in the cage and then that is not for you you have to be aware of how much work you're willing to put into things I don't get to relax much like even if I sit and watch TV if one wants to come to me if one wants something there's always the getting up and 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 you know there's just a lot of things you guys don't think about if you don't have birds that you might not know is work look at this one being all like aggressive right now excuse me my calm okay um this question can only be answered by you with some experience. Michael Lock Cockatoo Vinny, he loves to dive bomb, he loves to chew up boxes. That could be a lot of work for somebody. And that's like a lot of added work with the amount of birds I have. So everything depends on you and your situation. But I will say is you should never go into getting a bird thinking it's gonna be easy. And I'll tell you the main reason why. Besides however rambunctious the bird is, besides however loud the bird is, besides how much they destroy and chew up, which is something, you think that's funny? That is something you're gonna have to really be aware of. You have this factor that if you can't deal with it and your solution is putting the bird in the cage and never letting the bird out, oh, the bird bit me, the bird destroyed something, then you are just becoming part of the problem of those people that have birds in cages and think it's okay and they just say the bird doesn't want to come out because, you know, I tried to work with it. That is the problem that we have here, especially in the United States and everywhere. So you may become part of the problem because you think when you're excited about something that you're gonna be willing to deal with a lot of things that in reality, you won't have the patience for. I have an incredible amount of patience for birds because I grew up with them. It's like ingrained in my lifestyle. If you are 30 years old or 40 years old or even 18 and you got your whole life changes coming up, it may not be for you. Try not to expose that my hair is not colored, Cody. Next big question, can I potty train an African gray? Absolutely. You can potty train an African gray. You can potty train almost any bird. However, a lot of that is gonna depend on you, your sensitivity, and how attuned you are to your bird. So it's not gonna be a magical, like, oh my God, the bird just went somewhere to go potty and then flew back to me. <laughs> I will say a lot of my birds are like that. And it's just kind of being family with the birds but I'm not saying that's gonna be easy for you. So the first thing is gonna to have to be about how tuned in you are to your bird to say, okay, I think right now the bird needs to go potty and then you putting the bird somewhere where the bird can go potty. And there will be accidents and there will be mistakes and you will have to clean up 
sometimes on the couches and on the floor and that's just going to be how it is but yes they are potty trainable but it's not going to be magical and it's not going to be perfect a lot of that is going to depend on you right like when you get a dog like either they can pee in the house or you could be a good trainer and show them where they need to go how much work did you have to put into that you have to put the same into a bird but more often right so that's where it gets a little bit difficult that is also work on your part Right, Cody? Cody, do you mind? I put this question down for obvious reasons if you guys know what I'm talking about. And funny enough, we also have a similar situation in our house. So should you get a bird if you have a dangerous dog in the house? Maybe a dog or cat or something that is going to be harmful to animals? Probably not. You guys saw that we now have a Belgian Malinois with us temporarily. And he used to be in the US Army. And then we got him. He said, do you want to be in the army or do you want to come live with us with cuddles? And he said, I'll come for the cuddles. Again, I would never say to trust that dog 100%, but that dog has now lived with Ty for two years. And as my brother describes it, has Ty in the witness protection program and is very protective over the bird as well. But again, that doesn't mean like put 100% trust. That also doesn't mean that I would say, oh yeah, he's safe with Ty, then all my birds are safe. I really, you take the time to gauge things and make your own intellectual decision. But generally, if you're gonna have one kind of animal and then that's gonna cause another animal to have to be locked up when one is out and vice versa, not a good idea, I would rethink that. Mostly because it's gonna be a lot of work for you and you have to have an extreme hypersensitivity to all the things that can go wrong all the time with birds. And let's be honest, we're not born with those instincts. You know, the younger you are when you have a bird or the longer you've had a bird, the more different types of birds you have um, and the more hypersensitive you are, then the more problems you'll be aware of that could arise. I think it's my obsessive compulsive disorder that really, and I'm not joking when I say that, like, literally diagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder. I know a lot of people are like, I'm organized, but no, like I am traumatized, completely disturbed, like things are out of place. I am crippled. It's stupid rules I make up for myself. Sometimes I'm better, sometimes I'm not. Doesn't matter. Um, I think that kind of hypersensitivity has made me great with birds, but also that can stress people out. Is an African gray good for a first time bird owner? Oh my God, this is such a difficult thing to answer. Because, honestly, you know, people talk about starter birds and having a smaller bird before having a bigger bird, and then people are sensitive about the term starter bird, but sometimes there is no other way to explain it. Here's what I think, 100% honestly. First of all, the whole thing about having a smaller bird before a bigger bird doesn't devalue a smaller bird. It's just like kind of getting you used to all the crazy things they can do. So for example, you might have a cockatiel and it might chew up your notebook and you're like, oh, I need to like hide my notebook so that the bird doesn't chew it. And you might have a kind and it chews all the wires in your house and you're like, oh my God, I have to pay $70 to get a new MacBook charger or all these phone chargers and it, that may be shocking to you. Yeah, but what if you like started off with a macaw and they could take out the whole siding of your door? You know what I mean? These are these are the small reasons people don't think of. It's like, are you prepared for the amount of damage or do you just go out and get something because it's beautiful or cool or exciting or your friend has one or you saw it in a YouTube video and then it eats your door and then someone in your family is like, absolutely not, no way. We have a nice house, we have this, like whatever it is, like I can't afford all these damages. It just kind of like, Sometimes people that started with different birds, they kind of get used to it. On that note, can you be a first time macaw owner and be a great first time macaw owner? Absolutely, only you know that, that's up to you. But I'd advise you to do a lot of research and I don't even think it's possible. I don't think enough research is ever gonna do you. I don't think enough videos, even my videos, like where we show you things that are entertaining, it could make you want a bird. But at the same time, I try to show you things that are overwhelming so then you don't want a bird. And I'm more pleased with the emails that I get that say, I wanted a bird and you talked me out of it and that makes me happier than anything in this world because that's just somebody admitting to themselves that they probably would not be great for the workload of a parent.
wear it. So yes, can there be people that would be great with an African gray as a first time bird? Absolutely. Are you that person? I have no idea, but I could tell you what you should be prepared for. Having a toddler, having to chase somebody all the time. With Merlin specifically, he goes and chews the baseboards. He gets himself stuck in the garbage. Oh my God, what are you doing in the trash? Every second when I think I could relax, I have to go see what else he's damaging or destroying or knocking over or spilling. And it's not because of any irresponsibility on my part, like, oh, I left him alone. It's because they wanna have fun. They're, they're birds, they're animals. They like to forage, they like to do stuff. And there's a certain amount of area that I give them to do that, you know, um, because, I, I don't want to just put a bird in a cage, take everything away from them, and also my birds are flighted, right? So that's another kind of ability you have to have when you commit to a bird, like, do you want them to be flighted? I do, um, but some people don't, some people can't, and I, and I also, respect that you know it just depends i prefer flighted birds i think it's healthier so even if you can manage a parrot can you manage a flying parrot can you train them to fly to you and not fly into a wall can you handle them flying around the house can you make sure that they're not going to be in any danger can you make sure they don't run into windows like how do you do all this training do you guys know yeah this is something that you'd really have to think about because the amount of accidents i get emails about you have to really be in tune with you and the bird and do what's best for you guys i love to promote the goal of having a flighted bird because clearly my first bird was not flighted at first you know you get you get go get a bird at a breeder or bird store they send it home with clipped wings and that's what you get right but uh, I know birds well enough to know how happy my birds are flighted. That's just me. But it does add some extra work to you to give the bird a certain kind of life that you might want to give the bird. Cody is a little more weary. We call her like a super ninja, that she's like a little more protective. She's territorial, which is another thing. What if your bird gets territorial over a certain spot? Let's say in the kitchen. I just want to let you guys know all the things that could happen so that you're aware. Where are you going? Are you going into the office? Do you want to do some paperwork? Are you going to get a few things done? Write a memo? All right, see ya.